Hey guys, Ray here again. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, it's Nitro Kyosho. Uh, back of me is a 2002 Z06 Corvette. Uh, somebody's probably going to ask in the past video or this video why the hood looks like that. The hood, there's nothing wrong with it, guys. I have a trickle charge wire on the other side, so the hood is open a little bit. So that's why there's that gap there. Uh, for anybody who wants to know. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Corvettes, guys. Being this is the 60th year anniversary in 2013. Uh, the first ones were made in 1953 and uh, have been made obviously ever since. Uh, the Corvettes have come a long way in that time period with uh, the paint getting better on them, uh, the horsepower going up on them, and the, uh, the handling of them becoming pretty phenomenal too. So basically, there's been a lot of changes, obviously, since 1953. Uh, like I said, this is the 60th year anniversary of this car. Uh, this is a, a Z06 a model here. Like I said, it's a 2002. This car was made uh, for four years. Okay. Now, there's been a lot of changes with Corvettes, with engines, with horsepower. Uh, towards the late 60s and to the early 70s, the horsepower went up. Uh, you could find them as much up into the 400 horsepower range. Uh, the first time the Z06 badging name came around was, I believe, in about 1963. It really uh, has no significance. Uh, the name of it was just a code they put on the car, to my knowledge. I know the ZR1 did have uh, a, a little bit of history behind it. That's, that, from what I knew, stood for Zora, which was Zora Duntoff, one of the creators of the Corvette. It stood for Zora One Racing. Uh, and Chevy likes to put the Z on a lot of their cars, Z28s and the trucks and everything. Uh, in the 70s, guys, with the gas crunch problem and the emissions, the Corvettes really uh, took a turn for the worse like a lot of cars. You saw a lot of the muscle cars uh, disappearing. Uh, the Challengers and the Barracudas and you know a lot of uh, the cars really weren't too good into the 70s, into the early 80s. Uh, the Corvettes dipped down into the 200 and below horsepower in the 70s and even still up until I believe around 19... 84, they were only lingering in around the 210, 20 horsepower. I know I had an 88 Corvette and that only had about 240. This was really the first year where they bumped the horsepower back up to, into the 405 range. If you talk to a lot of enthusiasts, they said that this car was underrated, that it has a lot more than that. Uh, it has 425 to 430. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I guess you would have to test it out uh, to find out, uh, to check the horsepower of it. Um, but like I said, a lot has changed uh, in that time frame. Uh, even from the 80s to now, the handling uh, has really uh, been a phenomenal the increase in handling. I thought my 88 handled really nice, uh, but as you go up in the years, up until even now, and the new ones, I mean, the handling is, is phenomenal, world-class handling. Uh, the Corvette's always been General Motors' flagship car. It's really the car that, you know, toted the flag for America. Uh, really never had too much American competition until the Dodge Viper came along. Uh, and then I believe they stopped making that for a few years, but I believe they're bringing that back too. Uh, so they'll be back to an American competitor. Uh, the Corvette had overseas competitors, obviously, Porsches and uh, 
Ferraris and Lamborghinis and, and so forth, but as far as American uh, competitors, uh, really the Viper was the first one that really came about. Uh, the Corvette, uh, to much people's surprise, guys, it was never considered a muscle car. Uh, it never was rated as a muscle car. It was a sports car, uh, according to a lot of enthusiasts. And, and uh, the history of cars, you have to have four seats in a car to be considered a muscle car, which would be a Z28 Camaro, a Ford Mustang, uh, Barracudas, Challengers, GTXs, and, and so forth, GTOs, and all those type of cars, uh, which you could actually carry a, a family around then. These cars only have two seats, so. Uh, but, uh, you know, with the advances from coming from carburetors back in the 50s and everything, and uh, with the fuel injections that they have now, uh, the better. Mostly, a lot of the big changes, guys, over the years, obviously, with the suspensions and the handling, the paint work has gotten a lot better. The leather quality and the interiors have gotten a lot better. Uh, and uh, there's just been changes in every form from under the hood to underneath to inside. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, they keep getting better. Uh, the ZR1s now up in the 2000 and 12, 13 year range present day now have about 738 horsepower, which is, is phenomenal. This car uh, weighs about 3,100 pounds and it has, like I said, over 400 horsepower and it'll throw you back in the seat. I couldn't imagine having almost double that with a 738 horsepower car. That's, that's insane. Uh, I don't know, you know, <laughs> when they're going to top off the horsepowers. I mean, uh, you're basically over NAS NASCAR power horsepower now <laughs> and on the street, uh, which uh, you really have to know what you're doing or it can uh, turn uh, bad very quickly uh, messing around with a car with that kind of horsepower. Uh, so you definitely have to be careful. But... Uh, like I said, I want to put a series of videos out talking about Corvettes and a, and a little bit the history of them uh, and everything that really has improved. Like I said, to recap, I mean, uh, the horsepower has gone up, the paintwork has gotten better, the handling has gotten better. The, over the years, the tire quality, the company's making the, the tires, the Goodyear tires, the rubber has gotten better, softer compounds can handle higher top speeds. Uh, and uh, if you ever get a chance to own one of these cars, guys, they're uh, an icon, a piece of American history, and uh, definitely, uh, definitely an awesome car to have. But that's about it for this video, guys. Uh, like I said, I'd like to put some uh, more in-depth videos out uh, talking about the, uh, the history of Corvettes. This has just basically been a little basic uh, video uh, that I'm making, just giving some a little information here and there. And, uh, you know, I'll see how they do. My channel is primarily an RC channel, and I'd like to open it up to different, different things. And, uh, We'll see how this video and the other one I did prior to this uh, do, and if they do good, we'll continue to try to put some more in-depth videos out talking a little bit more about the engines and the transmissions and the displacements and the suspensions and the braking and, and a lot of a lot more in-depth things with actually year-by-year -year changes and uh, the generation changes from the C the original Corvette to the C2, C3, 4, C5, 6, and up into the present day. So, anyways, I hope you guys like this video, and I uh, hope you got a little bit of info out of it. Like I said, this is just a basic video. Uh, I would like to make more in-depth, and if we do good, we will. So, thanks for watching, guys.